Is it an access issue or is it just plain laziness? Hi everyone, my name is Vina, aka Miss WOC Reader, and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. So I'm back here with another bookish discussion video because there was just a topic going around on tw book Twitter that was making my blood boil. And it's a topic that goes around very often, and that is the adult fantasy discussion. There are too many people out here hating on adult fantasy for no reason, ain't never read it, ain't never tried to read it, but want to talk about it as if they know the genre. And I'm just not okay with that. So w the tweet that I saw kick everything off was by Katie Robert. And she said, I just saw this TikTok that's like, do you ever wish that there were more stories that are fun and adventurous, but with characters over 18? Friend. I have some great news for you about an entire genre called adult fantasy. I know, mind blown. Who knew there was fantasy out there with older characters? People talk about adult fantasy as if it's all old white men stories. And that just has not been fantasy for a very, very, very long time. There's always been women writing great stories in fantasy and the more we don't talk about those stories the more we are erasing them and making me male written epic fantasy the standard not sure where to start let me offer you some recommendations so the first one i'm going to say is for the highly seasoned um, fantasy reader if you like reading those 800 page books with lots of detail then I def and you like books like The Gilded Ones, I recommend reading Master of Poisons by Andrea Harrison. This one was actually one of my more difficult reads last year because I'm not used to reading fantasies that are so intense and detailed and this one had a lot of metaphors. I love 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 the world that it was set in and it, it gave you a lot to think about. Um, the next one that I have is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. Like, if you haven't read this yet, I'm not sure where, you, where you've where you been. This is one of the most popular fantasies out this year. It went into second printing before, before the book's actual release date. And everybody on my timeline was reading this one. It is another highly detailed fantasy, so if you build it, a heavy world building is your thing. The Unbroken by C.L. Clark had plenty of it. I love the world that it was in. Um, like I said, I'm not used to reading more like heavier epic fantasies, so it was a little hard for me in some spots, but I did enjoy it. And if you're like me and you're on the hunt for urban fantasy, Elemental Shadows of the Other Side by Whitney Hill is one you should check out. It's self-published. I think she has about five books now. It has werewolves, fae, vampires, these um, strange creatures called elementals, and so many other magical beings. It takes place in North Carolina, and it has a little bit of romance in it. Um, it starts out like a little hard to get into at first but then by the end it sucks you in if you are somebody who say like they like it like board try this one next and this one is actually sci-fi which i'm not even reading enough myself it's something that i definitely want to get into more and i've been waiting for a book too it was supposed to come out last year but then pandemic and it was supposed to come out this year also pandemic so hopefully it comes out next year and that is The Record Keeper by Agnes Gomillion. It is a dystopian. And if you have not read a dystopian novel outside of YA, and you are a fan of that trend and upset that it's not still in YA, it's an adult. They're still putting out these stories. Definitely check out The Record Keeper. 
And the next one, a lot of y'all probably already read, but the thing is, it's never acknowledged as adult, and it's definitely adult. It was put out by an adult imprint, and it is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. My cover looks different because I have the UK edition, and it is an adult witchy See, She said she might even be aging up the characters a little bit in book two. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I actually read the arc last year right before release day and fell in love with this story. It just had everything that I wanted but I like that it didn't fit comfortably within the YA troop, the YA tropes that everybody loves but it wasn't like a super high impact adult story. It sat in a comfortable space in between and I really enjoyed that. And then I've mentioned this one so many times, but Sound of the Storm by Suya Davies Akumboa. This is probably going to be one of my top five reads of the year. It is an African inspired fantasy. And honestly, this is the standard. He, he did it better than most authors. Like the way the voice was so good. I really enjoyed the characters. I never once thought about white people were all reading it and white people do not exist in this world. There are no random other characters of different ethnicities in that world, which I actually often find in in um, African inspired fantasies, especially on the YA end. Why there's always one non-black character and most of them are writing rest African based stories, I have no idea. We, we need to stop that. Like. Everybody being black in a world is not a big, bad, scary thing. But Son of the Storm was a great story. It did follow people in their early 20s. He's actually attending university before he gets, um, Donso, the lead before he gets kicked out. Also, this is the hardcover edition. Um, it actually regularly comes in paperback, but I loved it so much. I'm, I ordered a sub box, which I never do, because I wanted the hardcover. And I wanted this like exclusive like dust jacket, which dust jacket. I have to show you all this. That art though. Look at that. Amazing. Highly recommend Son of the Storm if you haven't already. It was another widely popular one. So if you haven't already read it, what are you waiting for? But those are just some of the adult stories that I read. And I highly recommend you check them out. And then another tweet that I saw was from Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Yet again, another adult fantasy author who does great diverse work. And she tweeted, I see that it's that time of the month where people insist that only white men write adult speculative fiction. And there are no books with women or POC rendering invisible not only decades of precursors but also the new crop of writers. And I will leave her tweet thread below because she made so many great points, but I totally agree. And it's the thing is, it's mostly women who are the ones constantly either mislabeling fantasy or saying this nonsense. Like, they'll, like, no adult fantasy isn't all just about sex. In fact, a lot of them don't even have sex. And even the ones that do have sex usually don't have very explicit sex because if you want a little bit more explicit sex, you have to go over to romance. So maybe paranormal romance fantasy, which is a great genre. Again, lots of stuff, indie especially for paranormal fantasy romance. So if that romantic fantasy stuff is your thing, go read indie. It's cheap. The books are usually between free and four dollars and you'll get a lot of great stories. But anyway, back to what Sylvia Moreno Garcia was saying. Yes, you are literally erasing the women out here doing the work. They are taking us to these new worlds and these new settings, giving us complex stories with great characters that you can root for and you're just saying well you aren't writing actual fantasy you're writing children's stories 
or you're or you're not writing it at all and it's like no these aren't children's stories a fantasy protagonist even being a teenager doesn't necessarily make it like YA fantasy y'all never do this with men a man can write a book where the main character is 10 and it's still considered adult fantasy a woman writes a book where the main character is 27 and people still want to label it YA and then when you call them out on it they're like well it read young to me how did it read young to you because they didn't use too many wor big words that made no sense it's it wasn't worthy of being called adult fantasy I don't understand make me understand and one thing too if you hear somebody mislabeling those stories call them out on it I do it all the time it's not to be malicious or mean or anything like that it's just like if you are talking about an adult fantasy and you are calling it YA I'm going to correct you because those women deserve respect everything women write is not YA everything that has a youthful protagonist is not YA. If the character is a whole ass adult, why are you calling it teen fiction? Again, we don't do that to men. I read The Black God's Drums. It's one of my favorite fantasy novella stories. And that is by P. Janelle Clark. And no one calls that middle grade fantasy despite the character being 13. I did once see it mislabeled on one of those book lists from like BuzzFeed or um, some other site as YA, but that was only once. For the most part, people are adamant on calling it what it is, which is adult fantasy. Why don't y'all treat women the same? Alex Brown also had a great Twitter thread that I will leave linked below. And they said, having some extra thoughts about this issue today. As diverse as fantasy is, it's still overwhelmingly white. And sis, and aloe, and het, both in terms of content and authors. It's been that way from the beginning, and it will be that way for a while longer. However, that doesn't mean we should fall back on claims of why is fantasy all old white men, because it's not. I get not being aware of every author of color writing fantasy today. Hell, I'm embedded in the field and even I learn about new diverse fantasy books and authors every day. But what we're not going to do is erase authors of color who have fought tooth and nail through a system designed at every level to exclude them. That's doing white supremacy's work for it. When you say there is no diverse fantasy and adult by authors of color, you are erasing all the great stories out there and making it seem like we are only allowed to fit in but a small space. Because believe it or not, why is not that diverse? It's not. Check how many books by authors of colors are released compared to how many white books are released. And then look at how many books overall during the year release and you'll see it's really not that diverse publishing is not that diverse period but the idea that it's either ya or just strictly romance doing so much better at the diverse um at diversity than every other genre is also something incorrect i see a lot everybody's for the most part kind of like on the same like playing field when it comes to diversity and publishing it's horrendous and a work in progress and one way we can continue that progress is by highlighting these stories and showing publishers that we want more of them by reading and supporting them and not erasing them when these conversations come up and then i just want to end on some books that are on my radar that i'm looking forward to um that one just released today which is diverse um science and it is Destroyer of Light by Jennifer Marie Brissett and it is a space opera um, and a Persephone retelling. Persef Hades and Persephone retellings are like all the rigs this year. 
Um, I feel like everybody's doing one, but she has one that is, I've heard such great things about it and I can't wait to dive into the story. I have not read a, a space opera in a while and I've been meaning to read more diverse space opera because I want to see more of those stories with black people in space living their best life. So I definitely want to spotlight that and I'm going to check it out. I suggest you do as well. Another one that I'm excited for releases next month and that is Magic Dark, Magic Divine by A.J. Locke. And I saw it's urban fantasy set in New York and that's all I need. I want more adult urban fantasy with black people. Like right now, I know they're doing a great job at it on the indie side. I did mention Elemental um, as one that I read. And I know they have so many more out there, but I also want to see that on the trade publisher side because they're doing a horrendous job across the board with that. It's not prevalent in adult fantasy on the trade publisher side. It's not prevalent on in YA fantasy and it's not prevalent in MG fantasy. I don't know why, but for some reason, magical black people always have to be in this world that is loosely based on our own, but not our own. Right now, the trend is to set it in like um, a fantasy alternative Africa, but sometimes we just need stories set here in America grounded in reality that we can identify with. So that's why that book is on my list. I am super excited for it. And it is like a fantasy romance, which so it combines two of my loves because I love romance and I love fantasy. Um, another one. That's on my radar. Actually does not come out until next year. And that is The Blood Trials by Annie Davenport. And I've heard great stuff about it already. And I did receive an arc. So I am excited to read it. Um, I've been following Annie Davenport. She's really trying to get this book into the hands of Black readers specifically and early so that they can review it and check it out for themselves. And that's, it's actually described as a blend between sci-fi and and fantasy and the publisher is actually um who is um harper voyager is actually specifically marketing it to people who already read ya who are looking to branch out into adult fantasy what a lot of people don't realize is that is something that adult publishers are actually doing right now they are looking for books that will appeal to both adult readers and YA readers and acquiring those stories so that they can pull y'all in and get y'all to read these books. And it's, and while they have been getting y'all to read these books, instead you're just saying, well, that's YA. No, the characters are in their 20s. It's not YA. The publisher doesn't do YA. It came out of their adult imprint. Treat it with the respect it deserves. There's nothing wrong with reading adult. It's not the big scary leap y'all think it is. It's just like reading other age categories. And then the last one is actually another space opera that is set in like an African-esque empire that I actually heard about today. And that is Sweep of Stars by Maurice Broadus. And I hear his name all the time, but I actually have not read any of his work yet. So I am super excited to check this one out next year. And I know we have this conversation all the time. We're going to end up having it next month like we always do. But seriously, do your research. It's not hard. It takes maybe like five minutes, ten minutes. To go on Amazon and check the sci-fi and fantasy category and see what the hot books are right now. And you'll see that there's so many great adult books out right now. You can follow people on Twitter. Follow people on BookTube. Follow people on Reddit. Our fantasy. Anything you want to read. They've probably already read it. Create a thread asking for suggestions. They're actually pretty nice in that Reddit. I know Reddit has a reputation for being crazy, but I don't mind going to our fantasy. And a lot of authors go there and do ask me anything as well. So you can go there and 
discover some new people. There's so many varied opinions about fantasy on that. It's not just people. It's it's not just dude bros who are reading Wheel of Time or whatever Brandon Sanderson book or George R. R. Martin or whatever. There are a variety of people in the R fantasy subreddit. And ask, when in doubt, ask your local librarian, ask your local bookseller, or just reach out on Twitter. I know, I know, I know. Sometimes you be asking for stuff on there and they want to give you something completely not it. I understand. But there are people who do take who do actually understand the assignment and will give you great recommendations. I'm just so tired of us having this stupid conversation every month because it's actually disrespectful. It's very misogynist um, to sit there and say women are not writing adult books. And their only basis on them not writing adult books is that they are women. Therefore, they should be they are writing for teens and children. That's literally the only basis because you have people writing characters who are like 30 plus and y'all are calling them YA. Ask yourself why. Why are you mislabeling those women's books? And you'll see it's because you believe because it's a woman writer, she's writing this type of story. It's just not true. And as far as diversity, you want the stories then you need to support the stories that are being released. And it said there were a lot of great titles that went into multiple printings this year. Um, so people are doing a great job promoting what they want to see. But we just need more people to get behind it so that these authors can get the bigger advances, get more trilogies, um, get the better deals, and we can get more of a variety of stories out there. The work has started but it's not done and there's plenty to look forward to. And thanks so much for watching my crazy rant. And remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll check you, I'll, I'll check in with you guys soon. Bye.